Stewart's Conversations podcast. So potentially family violence or domestic violence interpreters can find themselves interpreting in a variety of settings. Um, So it's not just police or court settings. Um, So you could potentially go into a job not knowing that it's a family violence interpreting job. Uh, You know, you might be going into a, into a counselor's interview or a, um, or, or a healthcare appointment and do language service providers actually provide this information or do they even have this information to provide the interpreter with? Um, because it would be probably better for the interpreter if they knew they were going into a domestic violence interpreting assignment, even though it could be at a setting, like you said, it could be social work, it could be counselling, it could be a healthcare appointment. Um, do language service providers have this kind of information to then pass on to the interpreter so they can at least mentally prepare themselves? Sometimes they do. Um, Sometimes they do because actually maybe you have, uh, you already have the information, you know, when you received your job uh, and you have that information, you know, it might come from a um, family violence organisation so you already know. Uh, A woman's uh, refuge, you already know where you're going or it might say family uh, uh, family matter at court or it might be for police and you already know sometimes you can call and they might uh, uh, find out for you that's that's one of the things but sometimes nobody can know whether discussions of family violence are going to come up because we've got the uh, well, the expected ones that we might know about, and that could be court, legal, and domestic violence organisations, as I just mentioned, including casework or counselling, refuges, uh, housing. Um, But disclosures of violence can happen in a wide range of settings in which we might not even expect it. For example, at a maternal and child nurse appointment. Now, in the first appointments, nurses in these settings usually screen for family violence. So they will um, ask a few questions uh, just to check on women and how, uh, and how the things are going at home. If we've already done some of these um, uh, jobs, we know, we know that perhaps it might be, but sometimes we're at a home visit with an occupational therapist. And it might be that discussions of violence might come up. Um, Or it might be at a Centrelink appointment. It might be at a teacher-parent interview at school. So we might think that, oh, we're going to a school for a a parent-teacher interview and we don't even expect that conversations and disclosures of violence of some sort might come up. So um, it's not always, we don't always expect it and language service providers cannot always know. It would be good if we could, um, and I'm not very sure what is the uh, policy or the system that language service providers uh, use in order to give as much information as possible. Um, But yes, we we can expect um, disclosures of violence or discussions to happen in a wide range of, of settings, that is for sure. Um, so, yes, you can potentially find yourself uh, interpreting uh, within the family violence context at, the, at very unexpected moments. So best to be mm. prepared and trained um, for them just in case. And unfortunately, uh, mm. you know, it's, it's, it's such a widely seen issue that um, it can pop up anywhere. So best to be prepared for it. Uh, Mm. We spoke about some of these resources. Um, I'm going to put them in the descriptions as well. Uh, Is there anything that you can tell our interpreters and translators, uh, practitioners out there that you could recommend some of these resources? Mm. Um, One of the resources that I would recommend would be the website called thelookout.org.au. 
Um, it's got resources for family violence workers, for other professionals in general, for victims and families as well. And um, they actually have training. They've got a, a, a page uh, that you can, uh, interpreters can check out on training and events as well. I think they offer or they will be offering some free training. I'm not very sure because they've cha they're changing everything with the new framework. Mm -hmm. So they did have resources in the past that now they have taken down, um, including videos and self um, uh, kind of online self-study, let's say, short courses. They, they were kind of little programs that you could do in, in maybe 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. They've taken that down and probably because the whole framework has been redeveloped, but they are going to, um, I think it was due now in September, October, that they will be providing some sort of free uh, resources and training, but they have a whole range of of uh, information there. I think that's a very good website, thelookout.org.au. And then another one, I also suggest uh, checking out um, the Domestic Violence Resource Centre Victoria. That website also has resources. They've got trainers, they've got training, and they have a whole range of, of different courses, um, PD courses. Uh, we just have to figure out and see which ones are, uh, are best for, for us, for interpreters, that are not directly related to interpreting. They're not specifically for interpreting, but there might be one that will help us uh, if we want to... Um, specialize a bit more in this in this field of work and also there's a lot of material written material and uh, videos and that are, are, are good that brings us back to it doesn't have to be focusing on interpreter training uh, i mean we could um, do our professional development on resources on understanding domestic violence as well um, so yes it doesn't necessarily have to focus on the interpreting skills there's plenty of uh, PD out there um, that uh, practitioners can utilise that are not specifically for interpreter skills. Um, so the lookout.org.au and the website for Domestic Violence Resource Centre, you said uh, in Victoria, is that right? Victoria. Uh, yes, yes, the Domestic Violence Resource Centre, Victoria. Yep. Uh, yes, um, so I will put both of those websites uh, on the description. Um, before I let you go, Olga, I know you're a practicing interpreter as well, and you have been for a very long time, and you've been doing your research on this too, and you've been training, educating um, in practitioners for many years as well. So, you know, putting all of these um, experiences together, do you have any... Uh, pointers, any key recommendations for interpreters out there that are finding themselves interpreting within a family violence context? Um, if I have to point out some uh, recommendations or strategies or suggestions, it would be, uh, first of all, having a very good understanding of what domestic violence and family violence is knowing about its gendered nature and that it, the central element of domestic violence is an ongoing pattern of, uh, uh, of behaviour that is aimed at controlling through fear. So having a very good understanding of what is domestic violence, what does it look like, what are these behaviours, and also... Um, knowing that uh, domestic violence and experiences of domestic violence are diverse and they are as diverse as women are diverse. So um, being open to, um, to listen to these stories and to uh, really deepen into what is domestic violence, I think uh, that's uh, the first thing that would be very, very important. Also knowing about our legislation. So what does, um, what does the law say about uh, domestic violence? Um, 
what are the services also responding to domestic violence? What is it that they do? What are their processes and what, are, what type of documents do they use? So, for example, what is an intervention order? Uh, what does it include? What does it look like? Um, how is an intervention order... Um, uh, how do you apply for one? Um, so all these and in every single setting. So what are the main goals of the, these uh, responding services? Also, another thing is a deep understanding of our AUSIT code of ethics. I know that this is a whole other thing and I, that's a, <laughs> you'll be pretty busy, Fatih, I think, uh, developing or providing um, webinars and training uh, uh, in relation to ethics, always needed. But um, in particular, not, not, not reading and knowing our codes, but how to interpret these codes and how they relate and how they can relate in our work and in these particular fields, in particular for uh, domestic violence and family violence. So thinking about what does confidentiality look like in our work? What is impartiality really? Or how does accuracy and completeness relate to our work in domestic violence settings? We just mentioned that before, how important it is uh, to be accurate and to uh, provide complete renditions. Um, um, so very important for uh, a caseworker to have all the details on all the information when completing a risk assessment because that can actually have an effect uh, or an impact on a woman's uh, life. It can be, she can be in high danger and knowing all these uh, risks. So all these details is very important. So really having a, a deep understanding and having the tools to interpret and apply these codes of ethics. So it's not about, oh, it just says it there <laughs> on our code. How do I implement them and how do I effectively uh, make use of them? Um, always remember to ask for pre uh, and post briefings. And that is also included in our code of ethics. We can ask for, I know that it's not always um, uh, easy to ask because of time, because of the setting, because of well, a whole range of reasons, but always ask for a pre and post briefing and always state your observance to confidentiality at the start of an assignment. So verbalizing our needs as interpreters, we do need that, those minute at the beginning to when you um, introduce yourself and then you can you uh, verbalize your commitment or your observance of uh, to confidentiality and that is going to set the scene and is going to um, uh, build that rapport with uh, the with the clients in order to them uh, disclose any um, any experiences of violence or um, or their traumatic events, and then they will be able to access those services. So it's very very important. It's not about only I know what confidentiality is about. Is that I don't go then and talk to somebody else about what I've just heard in this uh, job. It's about something else, isn't it? Yes, so using and interpreting those, um, those code of ethics are very, very, it's very, very important. And perhaps lastly, just one more thing would be uh, develop and, and set self-care strategies. Okay, so completing some sort of professional development uh, course or self-study in vicarious trauma is very important. Perhaps Fatih, another idea for another webinar? Um, it's coming up. Uh, everyone, oh, we're all different, so diff oh, it's coming up, very good. So um, it's a very difficult field to work in. It, well, in general, interpreters uh, do work uh, under a lot of stress. Not all jobs are, 
are easy uh, to process. So always developing some sort of, of self-care strategies. Make sure that you also make use of your um, right to post briefings. Okay, that will, uh, that will actually uh, help as well. I mean, that's, that's right. Uh, when, when we're interpreting, uh, rarely do we interpret it weddings and birthdays and happy environments. I mean, they're, they're mostly uh, quite um, uh, unfortunate situations that uh, clients or non-English speaking clients find themselves in. It could be health related, legal related. And I think it's not just with family violence interpreting, just with interpreting in general, um, we need to have a self-care plan and um, be aware of vicarious trauma. And um, uh, like you said, there, there is some training uh, coming up in regards to this as well. And I think, uh, not that I'm, that I'm advertising, but as, as a resource, uh, I think it'll be, um, it's important to point out as well that uh, Olga um, is delivering a two-part webinar on domestic violence interpreting, and you can access that via the All Graduates training website, which is Conversations. Um, and uh, again, I will put the link for that uh, in the description as well. Uh, so that kind of training is also available through the All Graduates Training Division. And um, Olga, anything else you'd like to add today? I think we've covered quite a bit. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. And uh, hopefully we'll be seeing more training in this field, um, which is uh, not new, not new, um, but perhaps the training, uh, the training is new. So um, quite a bit to do, a big field to explore, that's for sure. Well, thank you very much and good luck with the rest of your research and uh, hopefully we'll be calling you. you Dr. Olga Garcia Caro soon. Thank you. We'll see. <laughs> I'm sure we will. Thank you. Bye, Billy. Thank, you so much. Thank you again so much, Olga, uh, for your insight, and uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you, Fati. All Graduates Conversations Podcast.